Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at Porter's value chain. So what is Porter's value chain? Well, in a nutshell, it's a strategic tool that helps you map out the internal business activities you perform that add value to your customers. To make more sense of this, let's consider the example of a chef cooking a meal. Now, when a chef cooks a meal, they can sell that meal for more than the cost of the raw ingredients. Why? Well, because by cooking the meal, the chef created something more valuable than just the ingredients alone. Now, using business language, we can say that the chef has added value. And a critical factor in all restaurants' success is to maximise the price difference between the sales price of their output, meaning their food, and the cost incurred in creating that output, i.e. the ingredients plus any other overheads. Now, the example of a chef in a restaurant may seem very simple, but all businesses, no matter how complex, must behave in a similar way. They must take a bunch of inputs and produce an output. The gap between the value created and the cost of creating that output is known as your margin. And if you understand margin, then another way to define the value chain is as being the set of all activities an organisation performs to create margin or create value for its customers. Now, the purpose of a value chain is to help you understand the activities within your business that create value or create margin. Once you understand this, you can then invest more in your value creation areas and eliminate unnecessary business activities that aren't adding any value or any margin. And by doing this, you'll improve your competitive advantage and increase your margin. Now, the value chain was developed by Michael Porter, a Harvard Business School professor, and he described the value chain in his book, Competitive Advantage. And I'll include a link to that book below this video. So with all that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at the value chain. So the value chain isn't based on examining accounting costs and departmental budgets. Instead, it takes a process view of how an organization transforms inputs into outputs step by step, which are then bought by customers at a margin. And using this approach, Porter was able to design a generic chain of activities or a generic value chain that you can see here, which is common to all businesses. And broadly speaking, the diagram is broken down into two categories. So first we have primary activities that directly develop your inputs into outputs. And note that these primary activities are drawn in the order they happen. So for example, inbound logistics happens before outbound logistics. And secondly, we have support activities, and these help your primary activities run more smoothly. So let's jump in and take a deeper look at both of these categories. So firstly, primary activities. Now, each of your primary activities will directly relate to the creation of your product or service. So first we have inbound logistics, and this is the process of orchestrating the receipt of inputs and then storing and distributing them internally. Next we have operations. So once inbound logistics have moved the goods to the right location, operations turn your inputs into your outputs. Next we have outbound logistics, and these deliver your product to your customer once operations have produced it. Now for physical products, this may mean that you dispatch the product immediately or store it for a period of time. Next, we have marketing and sales. Now, just because you have created a product, that doesn't mean that your market knows about it or even wants to buy it. So marketing and sales are responsible for ensuring the market knows about your product and wants to buy it. And there are numerous sub-activities involved in this step, like advertising, setting your prices, channel selection, partnerships, and managing your sales pipeline. Finally, we have service. And these activities are those that occur after you have made the sale. And their purpose is to maintain or grow your product or services value after you have sold it. So this can include things like customer service, activities to reduce churn, 
customer training and activities to grow or maintain engagement with your product. So now let's take a look at support activities. And as we said, support activities support your primary activities to run smoothly. And the dotted lines you can see in the diagram show that support activities can help a specific primary activity and also play a role across all primary activities. So for example, human resources management supports marketing and sales, but it could also support logistics. So the first activity is procurement. Now, this is the process of purchasing the inputs you need. And it's also known as purchasing, and it involves finding new suppliers and negotiating the best price. Next, we have human resource management. This activity involves hiring, training, rewarding, employee well-being, and retaining good employees. Now, in today's knowledge economy, finding and retaining talented employees can be a significant source of competitive advantage, which is why many companies even have their own talent management departments. The next category is technology development, and this refers to any technology needed to support turning your inputs into outputs. Technology development includes software, hardware, infrastructure, and procedures used to create your outputs. Now, one thing to note here is it also includes your R&D or research and development department. Finally, we have firm infrastructure, and this is a catch all activity for functions that support the entire value chain. Now note that this infrastructure is the only support activity in the diagram that doesn't have dotted lines going through it. And that is to indicate that it truly supports all primary activities equally. Now sub activities here include general management, finance, and your legal team. So let's take a look at how to create your own value chain. But before we do this, one thing to realize is that support activities are just as important as primary activities. They just provide a different type of advantage. So primary activities are the source of cost advantage, whereas support activities such as general management or R&D are the source of differentiation advantage. Now, Mapping and using Porter's value chain isn't quick or easy and is going to require a lot of deep thought. But if you want to generate your own, you can follow these steps. So the first being to map out your sub activities. So for all primary and support activities, write down all the processes or activities that create value. Now each organization is unique, so no two value chains should look the same. Once you've completed this step, you'll have a value chain diagram showing the essential value creating parts of your business. Now the next step is to analyze the sub activities. So here you analyze all the activities you've written in your diagram and think about whether each activity carried out provides more value or creates more margin than it costs. Now, if you find areas where you can't definitely say, yes, these activities add more value than, than they cost, then you should consider changing or discontinuing these activities. And by performing this step regularly and making adjustments to your business or your organization, you will continually grow your margin and the value you provide to your customers. The final step is to examine the linkages. Now, the value chain of an organization isn't just a collection of independent activities. It's actually a collection of interdependent activities related by links or linkages. And a change within one activity will impact other activities. So, for example, let's say you identify a link between recruiting and sales so that the better the salespeople you hire are, the more products you sell. Now that might seem really obvious, but these links can be important. And because links are so important, coordination and communication between activities are just as important as the activities themselves. And this means that optimizing your links is just as important as optimizing the activities themselves that create your margin. 
Now the value chain is a powerful strategic tool and you can use it for more than just creating an understanding of how your organization generates value. So this includes things like creating a target operating model. So you can use it to design how and where you would like to add value to your chain in the future. So you might not be there yet, but your target operating model can act as a blueprint of where you want to get to, where you want your destination to be. So for example, consider a car manufacturer such as Volkswagen moving towards a fully electric cars. So they probably have some target operating model of where they want to get to, and they move step by step towards that model. Now, another way to use it is in ensuring complete coverage in major change initiatives. So suppose you're planning a large scale change program of work. And in that case, you can use your value chain as a checklist to ensure that you've considered the implications for all activities and all the links between activities within your organization. And finally, it can be a useful tool in understanding acquisition fit. So suppose you want to acquire another, another organization. In that case, comparing your value chain against that of the organization you're acquiring can help you determine if the investment is a good investment or not. So in the image here, you can see that the two companies have different drivers of value creation highlighted in, in yellow here. And it's basically up to you to decide if this alignment makes the target organization a good fit or a poor fit. So let's take a look at an example to help this sink in a bit better. So for this example, we're going to take a look at Amazon. Now, obviously Amazon is a very large and complex company. So we're only going to just scratch the surface at a very basic level and map out some of its most important sub activities. And in this example, the value adding activities Amazon performs are written in orange text. And additionally, you can see that we've linked two activities together, web hosting and AWS. Now, if you don't already know, AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, and it's a fully featured cloud platform provided by 200 data centers globally. And it allows organizations to, amongst other things, host and serve their website at scale, only paying for what they use. Now, what's interesting here is that before creating AWS, Amazon had already been hosting its own website at scale for many years. The creation of AWS took this core competency and offered it as a service in its own right. Now, mapping your value chain allows you to see linkages that already exist, but it also, also allows you to think of new linkages. So maybe you would think of creating AWS if you hadn't already got it. Now, it's obviously impossible to say if Amazon used a value chain to spot this opportunity, but hopefully from this example, you can see the power of understanding your key value creating activities and the links between them. So there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with the value chain in terms of advantages. Then the, really the key advantage of Porter's value chain is that it allows you to increase your margin. And it does this by clarifying how you create cost advantage and separately differentiation advantage. Now from this, once you know this, you can either cut costs or increase investment to boost your margin. Secondly, it allows you to create a shared understanding of how value is created within an organization. And finally, there's many different ways in which you can use the value chain. In terms of disadvantages, then once you've created your value chain, you need to keep revisiting it to keep it up to date with changes within your organization. Secondly, the model is focused on your in internal environment and doesn't consider external factors such as competitors, industry trends, consumer trends, things like that. Finally, by focusing on the detail of activities and how those activities interact, you can lose sight of the broader or larger strategic picture. So in summary, Porter's value chain is a tool enabling organizations to understand the key activities they perform that create margin 
or create value for their customers. Now, understanding how you create your margin is the first step towards boosting your margin. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.